Well, none of this is working. Strange Young Man is just uh, being a pain. <laughs> Uh, and I have a mess on my hands. I think it is time to go to plan B. And maybe, I guess, clean up a little bit. Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic. That's a little better. Now, for those of you who don't know, this here is video game violence. It was a Will It Bot episode a little while ago where I turned an Xbox 360 into a flail robot. So there's supposed to be a flail between two arms up the front here, which currently uh, we don't have that. We have a saw instead actually sitting in the chuck of a drill. But that is because I have an event coming up, uh, which I don't actually have a lot of time to build for and I have been mad scrambling to try and get a robot done. Uh, the mess that you saw at the start of this video with Strange Young Man, that was my attempts to get the electronics that I have working because I don't have time to have new electronics shipped to me and unfortunately it seems like to get Strange Young Man working I will need new electronics for him. So we're gonna have to try something different and the different is this. Uh, this saw blade mounted in a drill was basically the base concept for this new robot. I have been thinking of it as Video Game Violence version 2, but nothing here is going to stay. We're doing all new metal side arms, all new metal back. We're doing a metal base rather than a HDPE base. This HDPE will probably become the lid of the new version. Uh, the saw isn't even gonna be mounted on a drill. It will be mounted in an angle grinder, uh, a cordless angle grinder that I am being given by Steve. Thank you very, very much, Steve. That is going to solve a lot of this problem. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting because, like I said, this is gonna bear very little resemblance to the video game violence of old, uh, and it's going to be a brand new build. So maybe I'll call it something different at the end of this. I don't know, I have to build the thing first. Anyway, I have a lot of stuff to do because we are rush building this uh, and trying to get it all working in basically two days, which is going to be an experience. And here we go, parts drilled and cut. I was going to do my usual drop things on the table, but I actually think with all of this, I would have damaged the table. There is about four or five kilos worth of steel just sitting here, uh, which is actually quite awesome. So let's just have a quick look at this thing. Basically, we have a box that gets built. So we have our two side rails, a back rail, which sits along the back here. Uh, and we'll get welded on. And then two motors sit in here, one and two. And then we have a front rail, which goes up there, like that. Uh, and then we have the weapon mount, which goes all the way up the front here, which uh, you can't really see. So we're gonna move everything back a little bit. Ugh. Damage the table some. Uh, there we go. So this is how this all goes together. Uh, and this guy, I'm gonna weld in some little standoffs out the back here so that it kind of isn't just being held up by one weld, it will be held up by three welds, and then there's also gonna be angle brackets that hold the lid on as well, so hopefully that back plate should be okay. I don't know, this is gonna be the first time I've basically had five mils worth of steel just being held on by not all that much. Like these square tube are gonna be held on with welds on either side and along edges and stuff, like they are going to be totally fine. That back plate, yeah, I don't know. And here we are all welded up. I can still uh, use a little bit of grinding to kind of 
take down some of my very, very bad welds. I haven't welded in a while, so this one was particularly egregious, but uh, where have I got a shape now? An actual decent sized thing. So what I wanna do at this point is do a very quick mock-up, get everything together, uh, because I didn't actually cut the standoffs out of uh, HDPE, which is what I wanted. I cut them out of acrylic so that I can do this mock-up and then I can adjust the shape if I need to and then get this piece cut out of HDPE. Uh, and I also picked up some extra grinders, but we'll talk about that in a minute after we have gone through and done this very quick mock-up. You know what? Let's do this the easy way. And there we go. We have one mocked together combat robot, which is actually is looking pretty good at this point, I think. We've got our uh, one of our top plates. I'm actually gonna run two separate top plates on this robot, mostly because I want a bit of steel over top of this. I think it's mostly about actually adding a little bit of extra weight. And then, of course, we have the angle grinder, which sits about there. Uh, and locks in, but of course we're going to need to cut this down. I haven't opened this up yet. I've got actually three different angle grinders because I have a feeling I'm going to need more than one because we are literally running this whole thing off of an angle grinder just kind of stuck to the front here. So there is a good chance that one of these things just explodes basically, <laughs> uh, which means that spares, spares is a good idea. Anyway, speaking of angle grinders, the next thing we actually need to do is open one of these bad boys up uh, and see what's inside, see how much we can cut it down. Hopefully we can cut it down enough so that we can actually get it to sit nicely along this front beam and not have to have it at a weird angle like this because that would be a pain. I think we should be okay though. Wow. <laughs> Okay, that is a chunky boy. That is a massive DC motor. Uh, we are gonna have to take this out and clean it up a little bit because it is a second hand grinder and there is a ton of crap in here that you do wanna clean out. Good news though is that a lot of this back half is now completely redundant. Once we pull everything out, we'll solder an ESC directly to this motor, which should be totally fine. There shouldn't be any problem with that. That means we'll remove all of the switch mechanism and all of this battery mechanism and probably just cut the grinder about here somewhere, which should be more than enough uh, space removed for us to go ahead and actually attach it to the robot, which is fantastic. I really, really like that. That is exactly basically what I wanted to see. Also, I'll say this is an 18 volt motor. We're gonna be running it on 4S, which is about 16 volts. Uh, that's good though because this act, this grinder actually runs too fast for the saw that we want to run on it uh, and as per sportsman rules you need to run it at the rated speed so running this at lower voltages and then probably also putting a uh, maximum limit on the throttle too to keep that throttle in the right zone is going to be exactly what we need to do here and voila, we have a grinder done and done. This is the fully cut off grinder. Everything is cleaned out inside. I just need to wire it up basically. And we have a saw blade attached. All I've done is I have printed up a little shim that keeps the saw blade centered as the uh, grinder washer clamps it down. So the actual 3D printed part isn't taking any load. It's literally just to center everything up as the nut gets tightened into place. So it should be, 100% fine, and as you can see, <coughs> if I do this, the grinder now fits inside uh, this section here, which is where it needed to fit, which is perfection. I have also started painting. As you can see, we are stark white on basically every aspect at the moment, other than one, and that is the bottom. Uh, and before I tell you that, I'll also tell you, I've got a new name for this robot. It is going to be called Temporal Displacement, and we are going for a 90s theme. Uh, this is a 90s aesthetic pattern called Jazz that I have attempted to recreate, I think kind of poorly, personally, um, but I think it's still somewhat recognizable, uh, and that is what we're going to do for this robot. I'm calling it Temporal Displacement, we're giving it a bit of a 90s theme, and realistically, this style of robot build, because it's fairly thrown together, is fairly reminiscent of a kind of 2010s featherweight. 
Uh, so it is a bit of a throwback in a lot of different respects. We are very, very close to finishing up here though. The final things left to do are the top plate, which I have literally just gone and got a laser cut template, which will allow me to drill all the holes where they need to be in both the HDPE top plate and the steel top plate. Uh, and then we wire everything together and finalize. The only thing I've realized is there's a little notch here that you can see in my, uh, in my top plate there. And there is no holes on this side because that notch is where I'm gonna put the power link in, but I needed holes drilled in this side uh, so that I could actually mount the power link in there. And I completely forgot to do that. So we're going to have to do that uh, now essentially and with a hand drill because this chassis as it currently stands will not fit in my drill press i really really should have marked and drilled those before welding and painting but sometimes dems de breaks Bam! One combat robot. Now it is time to test. Done and done. Temporal displacement is now mostly together. I say mostly because we've got zip ties holding the angle grinder on right now. We do need to replace those with pipe clamps. The problem is the pipe clamps I have aren't quite big enough right now. So I'll go get some new pipe clamps, but I don't have time to get those uh, on camera. So we're gonna do that off camera. We'll pipe clamp all of that up and everything should work out quite nicely. The electronics test you just saw worked out brilliantly. Uh, this machine is at nine kilos out of a possible 13.6. Uh, so we're probably gonna have some problems in competition, but hey, at least I have something to fight uh, and it should be good fun. Anyway, that is gonna be it for this video. I hope you've all enjoyed that one and I will see you in the next video.